So we're going to go ahead and get started as people roll in um, quietly. My name is Deidre Corson. I'm the executive director at North Valley Music School. And uh, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for coming tonight. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And, um, you know, we're in the business of music at the music school, but we know how powerful of a tool music is. And it goes back hundreds of thousands of years before present um, that people have been using music as a tool to essentially um, take care of our ills and uh, deal with our pains and uh, bring people together and be connected and um, there's so many things that we can learn from music education and then there are so many things that we can just learn from being having music in our, our lives. So I'm really excited to introduce Casey Howard who is the executive director of the Nate Shoot Foundation who will be running the panel tonight. Um, we have four amazing uh, guests from different corners of the world who uh, hopefully will have a nice discussion tonight about how music does help us all get through this crazy thing called life. So please welcome Casey Howard. How did that sound? I always feel like it's, it's the right thing to do to use a microphone because while I believe my voice is loud enough, I don't know what your hearing is like. So it's good. maybe I'll okay. turn on the microphone. <coughs> Don't need the microphone. We're okay? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, at least for this part. Maybe when we get into the discussion, um, I'll turn it on. So, yeah, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool opportunity to have had the music school reach out to us and, and to get to facilitate this conversation. Um, the, the core of what we're talking about tonight is resilience, right? And resilience is sort of our ability to bounce back, how we handle difficult situations. Um, but I also think that, that there's a piece about resilience that is just willingness to step into the hard spaces. It's not just how we bounce back, it's our willingness to step into those things that can feel really challenging and scary and vulnerable. Um, so I think in a lot of ways, this is one of those evenings, um, certainly for our panelists. So big gratitude to you all for stepping into that space. Um, and maybe in some ways for some of you here to show up tonight, it, it's taking a little bit of resilience and vulnerability. So thank you so much for that. Um, it's also very, very important to me that as we talk about mental health, and, and while we will focus on resilience and, and a hope message, it's really important to me that you all take good care of yourselves. So whatever you need in this time together, if you need to step out for a second, get a drink of water, go walk outside, um, that is all fine with full permission from us. Um, and then I just ask that after you leave here tonight, if things come up for you, that you connect with your people <coughs> and you talk about what came up for you um, and you reach out for support if you need it. Um, so I'm really excited. The first thing we're going to do tonight is actually hear from some youth voice. We're here in the White High School Black Box Theater, and we had the opportunity recently in HU Foundation to talk with several um, White High School Orchestra students about their connection to music and about how it helps build resilience in them. So I'm excited to show you this video tonight. Um, I'm gonna ask for lots of grace with the technology because that is not my strong suit. So I think we've got it figured out. So we'll start with this video and then, and then we'll jump into a conversation. Thank you again for being here.
there aren't many ways in a day in the Look at this. <laughs> there aren't many ways in a day in the life of a student to experience beauty and art. And so having a structured time like music to do that and for them to have that in their lives is really beneficial. It just makes me happy because it's something that's been around me and I get to contribute to music. Joy. Brings me up to that point of um, happiness. Music for me is just a really good, fresh way to kind of clear my head. And I just really like being able to express my feelings through music. I like to say that in our band classroom, we teach first and foremost how to be a super well-rounded human being. And so for me and for my students, a goal is that as we experience music and as we get to work together as an ensemble and as we're working together as a team and sharing ideas that we're growing as people in general. My name is Ryan. Um, I play the viola and music brings me joy and excitement. I got introduced to music when I was in third grade. My brother started off with it and um, it's what motivated me to get started with it. It lets my mind go into a different world pretty much and just let it doze off and stick and be one with the music and not think about life's problems. What keeps me motivated is getting new music and seeing what challenges it can give me that I can move forward with. I'm Aaliyah, I play the clarinet, and music to me is an art form to express yourself. When I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed, um, playing music can change that mindset because when you play music you're just you're focused in on your instrument and the sounds that you're making and so you don't really have like any space in your mind to be stressed out about those other stuff because right now in the moment you're just trying to figure out what note you need to play. My name is Malia, I play the cello and music to me is a way to express myself when I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed, music is kind of like a way for me to find accomplishment and contentment, and I just really enjoy playing music. What keeps me motivated is kind of the feeling that you get after you play a piece for a long time, and like having that sense of accomplishment after you play it correctly. It's like really just rewarding and refreshing to be able to play something so beautiful. My name is Matthew King. I'm the band director at Whitefish High School. I play the tuba and the upright bass, among other instruments. As a band director, I get to watch students um, have music in their lives for a, a larger period of time. And it's neat to see how much it sustains them through the school day. I think a lot of them find a music classroom as a place to release and just be themselves and express themselves through the day that they don't always get in other classrooms. What resilience means to me is to push to make yourself feel better um, whenever you are down or mad or just not feeling very good because it's easy to just sit in your sadness but sometimes it's like you just gotta push through and do things that make you feel good so you can feel better. The community I have in the band program definitely adds to my resilience um, and it makes me stay determined to do my best. When you practice, you just you have to keep pushing through. It's like if you keep messing up on something, you just you keep practicing it. And when you get it, it'll make you feel better. With resilience, you have to keep pushing to make yourself feel better, even if it can be hard, Resilience means to me to be a brighter and better person to society and the community. Just a stronger self for everyone else and hopefully it spreads on and pushes towards other people. Playing the viola really helps me become a better and stronger me because it allows you to go through challenges and life has <coughs> nothing but challenges. Resilience to me means finding healthy ways to like express your feelings and push through the day. It's really important to find ways to do that that are healthy because you could put yourself in really difficult situations and end up in spots that nobody should really be if you don't find a good way to be resilient. 
Being part of orchestra has added to my resilience by giving me a, a healthy way to express my feelings, especially when my feelings aren't super great. Music has helped me relate to other people by kind of the community that I've built through orchestra. Because I know there's a lot of people in my class who've been through a lot of the same things that I have. So being able to like relate with people through music is just really like amazing. It's more of like just a space to really express my tough feelings. And I think that music is really beneficial to your mental health because if you can find ways to really um, just get those tough feelings that you may struggle with with mental health out of your body, that is just really, really important. It's a beautiful way for students to be able to kind of move beyond just the, the difficulties and stress of their day. If you're interested in playing music, find other people that want to play too because it's a lot easier to learn with other people than it is to just learn by yourself and try to figure it all out by yourself. Advice that I would give to someone who wants to play music is you have to start somewhere. Like, Obviously, it's really difficult to get started, but once you start to pick it up, you will regret what it takes you. So I'd like to go ahead and invite our four panelists up to join us now. Um, we'll go ahead and, and kind of do some introductions with them, hear about who they are and, and why they're here and what is their connection to music and um, to the degree that they feel it's, it's relative and that it's safe, talk a little bit about uh, their connection to music and, and mental health. Um, so let's see, Kirsten, can I just ask you to start us off? Is that okay? Great. Hi there, I am Kirsten Allen. I am a board certified music therapist. Um, excuse my low toned voice today. I'm on the tail end of a, a two week laryngitis. So hopefully you can understand me. Um, I have been in the Valley for, well, it's 22, uh, seven years. And um, I have a private practice called Flathead Music Therapy. I've been a board certified music therapist for now 12 years. Um, as a music therapist, I provide uh, therapy services with modality of music. Um, right now, I am practicing mostly in nursing homes, assisted livings, um, hospice, and uh, I have one kiddo on the caseload right now as well. Um, I'm originally from Billings, by the way, so I'm a Montana native, I'm just not a Valley native. Uh, and just to give a quick story of what a music therapy looks like, um, when I was in Colorado, I had a patient who had dementia. Um, he was fairly well progressed into his dementia, and his daughter uh, had a hard time connecting with him and would come to visit him when I saw him on a weekly basis. So we'd schedule it ahead of time, and um, we'd go into a little room, and we'd sing, and he'd try to play ukulele, because he used to play ukulele before. Um, and one day, we were singing a song together. It was one of his favorite songs, I've forgotten what it is. And he, he turned to his daughter, whom he never recognized as his daughter up until this point, months and months into our treatment, and turned to her and said, I know you, your name is, what her name was, your name is Carolyn, you're my daughter. And this music for him in that moment sparked his memory um, and allowed him to connect with his daughter and his of course, you know, there's no dry eye in that room at that point in time. Um, I was crying, she was crying, he was just happy because his family was there and he knew who, the, who she was at that point in time. So we just had a great old time. So um, I'll talk a little bit more about music therapy and how it works and foundations and things like that um, as we go on, but at least that gives you an idea of what I do as a music therapist. My name is Brett Holmquist. I, I'm here coming, coming from a couple of different angles. 
Um, I, I co-founded and direct a local nonprofit called Ravenwood Outdoor Learning Center, which is primarily focused on connecting children with uh, nature and the outdoors and developing skills. But um, you know, I also am a prof professional musician, and so music has embedded itself in our program very deeply, especially at different times along the way. And um, because it's such a passion of mine, I've, I've done a lot of work sort of inside of myself and shared my own experiences with others in, in relation to um, you know, what most people call songwriting and what we call at Ravenwood song catching. The idea being that the, 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 the idea of music and the need for music is present with us at all times, as well as all of our other brilliant ideas and artistic endeavors. And we are we're here kind of like a, an instrument ourselves, our beautiful brains and hearts, uh, when we turn our focus to what is really present. Um, and nature is a wonderful catalyst for that. We, we can get in touch with important messages that are sometimes difficult to put into words alone. And we can use music to express ourselves and to connect in a different way. So that's, that's going to be my primary lens that I'll be looking at. Hi, I'm Emily Frodenberger. Uh, I am a whitefish born and raised gal, um, but moved to Colorado to study music um, in 2017. Actually, that's a lie. It wasn't studying music. It was in music high school. Um, <laughs> but uh, music has just always been a pretty huge part of my life, um, as well as struggles with mental health. Um, so uh, I'm super privileged to talk here today about how music has provided me with an outlet in uh, coping with life circumstances. Um, as a child, I think I always had a little bit of mental health um, struggles going on. It's pretty present now looking in retrospect, um, but we never knew what to name it. And then after um, kind of just a tough childhood, experiencing some abuse and bullying at school, I just hit a really, really low point. Um, and I was always able to kind of externalize and blame other things for it. Uh, and then once moving to Colorado, I ended up in a, an inpatient treatment facility twice and have done a lot of mental health work since then, doing all kinds of CB, or DBT and CBT and EMDRs and all these different kinds of therapies um, and have really just come up with what I feel to be a pretty well-rounded approach to how to manage my own struggles. Um, and music, meditation, connection with nature, and just recognition of our own humanity uh, is a pretty major part of that. So that's kind of my lens, is just uh, bringing the, the human aspect to it. So. Hello, um, my name is Nancy Thompson. Um, I'm a
you all so much for being here. Um, I'm really excited because I think there there are a different a lot of different lenses here at, at the tables tonight. Um, before we get into the conversation, um, it feels appropriate to start with some music. So I would love to invite Brett up to the stool. Um, and if Brett, if you could share a song with us, um, I think he's going to play a, an original song called Beauty Way. share just a little bit of background um, on this song, which was inspired by a, a really special evening at a, at a teen overnight camp. So imagine a group of 15 or 20 teenagers coming together for a week-long adventure in the backcountry and, and then um, settling in for their storytelling. Evening. We have uh, a tradition at our camp where we invite a few community elders to come, and there's something really magical about that connection between teenagers and grandparents. Um, and, uh, and the magic was really present in this particular night. So I just want to paint the picture for you a little bit to bring you there with me. Um, it was uh, a late, or I guess it was probably early August, but it was one of those seasons where we were deep into fire. And there were no fires allowed at camp, <laughs> which is, is a, you know, it's part of the magic, telling your stories and singing your songs around the fire. So, so we, we pushed the edges just a little bit. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the kids had become very proficient at creating fire by friction. And when you do that, you generate a small little coal, a little pile of dust that's hot enough to, to have um, kind of a smoldering uh, coal inside of it. And it was a breathless, windless night. There was just no air moving whatsoever. I, I, amazing how still it was. And hot and smoky. Um, and there's a particular kind of, of um, conch, a, a fungus that grows on a particular type of tree in this area that is very well known in our circles as a coal extender. So it keeps a coal alive for a really long time, hours and hours of travel. So we had one of those, and he put his, spun up his, his coal and he put it inside of this little conch, and we just set it in the center of the, the fire pit. And, and from that, for the next two hours, while we had our time together, there was this thread of smoke. And I, when I say thread, it looked like a piece of thread yeah. that just, swirled straight up into the sky the whole time. It was so beautiful. And the stories that they shared and the ways that they connected with each other, um, the maturity and the brilliance that they exhibited was so profound for me. Um, a lot of these kids I had watched grow up, you know, from little ones coming to the day camps. And uh, it was just a really, really special, special night for me. And it, it brought together an idea and an experience um, that culminated in this song called Beauty Way. And uh, it's, it's, about, it's about being able to open ourselves to the beauty that is present around us and within us, in between us. So I hope, hope you can join me in the campfire. <laughs> at the center of the soul Take the time to get to know Life bring you to your knees Aching beauty Sunlight through the trees
test you and let go. Find the bread and fence of show. Every day's a chance to say, talking to you. Choice. 